Honors Algebra, Mr. Lawrence here with your flipped lesson for Thursday, February 23rd. And today we are going to be looking at one more type of the big F word. And today we are going to be factoring by grouping. Now, factoring by grouping is really easy. Kids often have trouble with it, but it's easy. You just got to think about it as GCF three times. Yeah, that's all you're going to do. You're going to GCF three different times. So let's look at an example. Oh, there we go. All right, let's say we had uh, this polynomial, something with four terms in it. I'm not in writing mode. There we go. Okay, now your first impulse might be to combine the like terms, and that's a good impulse. The only problem is you don't know how to factor a, per a trinomial that's not a perfect square trinomial yet. Okay, so we've got to learn this grouping technique because sometimes these terms won't be like and you won't be able to just factor, all right, or combine like terms and then factor. So we're going to factor by grouping. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at two pairs. I'm going to break this up into these two pairs. And then I'm going to break this up into these two pairs. Now, I have to be careful here. Um, it, it doesn't matter in this example, but the 3 was positive, so the plus can be outside. If the 3 were negative, I would have to grab the negative in the quantity and then put a plus between them. Okay? And I'll point that out in a minute on another problem. The only rule to which, two, which pairs you group together, um, which terms you group together, is they must have a GCF. Okay, they must have a GCF. See in this first quantity, they each have a GCF of X, right? I'm going to pull that X out, and I'm going to get X plus 2. I just GCF the first pair. All right, now I'm going to GCF the second pair. The GCF there is 3. Okay, and that'll leave me with an X plus 2 as a quantity. Now look at that. Did you notice that I ended up with X times X plus 2? Doesn't that mean that x plus 2 is a factor of x times x plus 2? x times the quantity of x plus 2? Isn't x plus 2 one of its factors? Yeah, that's what it means. Now, come over here to the other one, plus 3 times the quantity of x plus 2. Hey, wait a minute. It sounds like I'm repeating myself. I think I just said 3 times the quantity of x plus 2. The th I didn't say the 3 before, but I definitely said the x plus 2 again. It's a factor of each side. See, it's a factor over here, and it's a factor over here. Remember, factors are the things you multiply together, right? Like 12, two of 12's factors are 3 and 4. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 is a factor of 12, so is 4. Well, in this one, x is one factor, and the other factor is x plus 2. On this side, 3 is a factor, and x plus 2 as a quantity is the other factor. And since that x plus 2 is common to both things, I can pull it out. I can GCF. So I look at this first one here, right here, and if I pull, divide out an x plus 2, what's left? An x. I looked at the second one right here. If I divide out an x plus 2, what's left? A positive 3. And there you go. We just factored by grouping. All we did was GCF, GCF, and then GCF one more time. It is so simple. Don't make it hard. Okay, let's see here. Um, how about if we had x cubed minus 4x um, plus, you know what, I'm going to rewrite these in a slightly different order. x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x uh, minus 20. Okay, and I only rewrote it. I could have done it the other way, but I rewrote it because I want to talk about that negative thing. All right, uh, I'm going to look at these two terms. Can I group them together? To say yes, I have to be able to find a GCF. Okay, I found a GCF. Hopefully, you know the GCF between these two terms is x squared. So I'm going to GCF out an x squared, and I'll be left with x plus 5. All right, now I'm going to look at these two terms. I want to group them together. All right, now remember I said you got to grab that negative. Got to grab that negative and then put a plus between the quantities. If you forget the plus, you've changed it into a FOIL problem. All right, don't forget the plus. I look here, and some of you are thinking the GCF is 4, and I don't agree. I think the GCF is negative 4. 
So I'm going to pull out a negative 4. And what's going to be left is an x plus 5. Remember, I'm dividing each term by negative 4. All right, you see why you can't stop and think is a negative divided by a negative a positive? You just have to know that by now. It is unacceptable to stop and take time to think at this level. We have too much to do. If you can't do the basics, you can't do the whole problem. It takes you 10 times too long. All right, now look at here. In this first one, I have an x squared times a quantity of x plus 5. Over here, I have a negative 4 times a quantity of x plus 5. Hey, I repeated myself again, didn't I? I said x plus 5 on both sides. That means it's a common factor. I'm going to do x plus 5, GCF it out. If I pull a GCF x plus 5 of x plus 5 out of here, x squared is left. If I pull the quantity of x plus 5 out as a common factor here, what's left? A negative 4. Now, you might think you're done, but danger, Will Robinson, take a look at this one right here. Look at this. What do you see? I see a perfect square minus a perfect square. This is the difference of perfect squares. Square root is x. Square root is 2. The final solution will be the quantity of x plus 5 times the quantity of x plus 2 times the quantity of x minus 2. That expression is factored completely. All right, we're going to look at one more example. And then tomorrow in class, we're going to look at a few more examples. And hopefully, you'll be getting good at this. All right, example number three. Uh, let me see here. I have x cubed, y squared, plus 3xy minus 2x squared, y minus 6. All right. Um, I want to group numbers together. I could move them around. But it's always easiest to try and group these two together. Is there a GCF? Yeah, I think there absolutely is. I'm going to try these two together. Remember, I grab the sign. I grab that sign right there. That sign goes with the 2. Is there a GCF there? Yeah, I think there is. All right, so I can factor this way. Okay, so what is the GCF of this first quantity? Well, it looks like an x is common. Oh, I'm not in right mode again. X is definitely common. It looks like a Y is common. And I think that's it. So I factor out a GCF from the X cubed Y squared, and I'll be left with X squared Y. I factor out a GCF of XY from here, I'm left with a plus 3. All right, I come over to this quantity, and it looks like the GCF is negative 2. If I factor out a GCF, I get X squared Y plus 3. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. All right, now I look at my two groups. I've got xy times the quantity of x squared y plus 3. I have negative 2 times the quantity of x squared y plus 3. Did I repeat myself? You bet your boots. I sure did. So I am going to bring out the term that is common. I am going to pull him out. I'll be left with an x, y, minus a 2. And that is factored completely. That will not go any further. All right, guys. Um, you're going to have to learn this one on your own through the videos, all right? And you'll see why tomorrow. But we're going to have more examples in class and a chance for you to practice. All right, Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.